Welcome back to Window on Wall Street, a program that shares information about delayed food sensitivities. Sensitivities that may cause symptoms like migraine headaches, chronic fatigue, stress, digestive issues such as IBS, and even ADD, ADHD, just to mention a few. I'm Lauren Koenig, your host, and in today's program, we'll be taking questions from patients who've invested in immunoblood a simple blood test that identifies foods which could be the cause of many symptoms. My guest today is Jeffrey Zavik, author of the very popular book, Toxic Food Syndrome, and the founder of Amino Laboratories, the world's most respected source for accurate delayed food allergy test results. Jeffrey, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Now, I've read your book and I love it, and I'd like you to share a couple of your success stories that you've written about in your book. What are your favorites? Well, I always think back on children. I'm, I'm particularly fond of children and the idea of how they might be needlessly suffering with symptoms that are causing them difficulty in either uh, studying and keeping their attention on their things or their parents are just very uh, upset behavior. They're very inconsistent and wild in their behavior. And uh, there was one little boy where uh, what, what I'm remembering so much is he was so hyperactive that they were just about their wits ends and they were on the verge of literally being told you need to institutionalize this boy. Well, the test had such, this blood print had such a powerful impact on him that the mother wrote to us and said, thank you for giving me my son back. Now that was really something. So to have such a far reaching impact, and here you're talking about a child or children, because I've heard more than one such story, where they were going to be institutionalized, their behavior was so uncontrollable and it's simply related back to foods that were causing very strong toxic reactions in their body which was affecting their behavior. This is something that makes the work we do very worthwhile. That's great. Are there any other ones you want to share? Well, I think there, there are so many people today, especially females that we've met with and, and over the years and so many weight loss centers that have made use of our testing. Uh, a lot of women in particular have, uh, they're very frustrated about losing weight or losing weight, gaining it back, losing weight, gaining it back, try this diet, that diet, and they all work or they all don't work. You know, they work for a period of time and they don't work. And so finally, when women and people in general, but I, I'd say women are more open to this, tend to, tend to be, uh, they find out that what's missing from every diet they've been on is to pinpoint which foods within that diet weren't right for them, weren't harmonious to their system. And so we, with the blood print, we're able to do that and people will then tell us, finally, I can lose weight and keep it off. Congratulations. Yes, thanks. Now let's take a call. Hi, this is Mary Lee, and I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. And I've got this candida situation, and I really need some guidance on that. Can you help me? Well, candida is becoming an increasing, uh, something that we're becoming increasingly aware of. It was once thought of just yeast infections for women. It's far more reaching than that now, and men and females can have such a problem. Candida is a common organism found within our digestive tract. It's just that it's a very friendly, aggressive one, meaning that when things are out of balance in one's body chemistry, candida tends to overgrow. Well, everything that's living in our body has a life cycle, which includes removing of waste. And so as candida does grow, it produces imbalances and all kinds of problems within our systems, oftentimes under the term called leaky gut. That is, we end up having our digestive tract that isn't functioning as well as it should and allowing leakage. And that what happens is that where these food sensitivities, these particles of food get through to the system, cause toxic reactions, and the whole thing is tied together of candida, leaky gut, food reactions, it's all very kind of complicated, which is why you're really best to be under a doctor's supervision. Now typically a doctor will use a combination of the blood print to pinpoint which foods the patient should stay off of that has a candida condition, but the doctor will also be recommending either over-the-counter nutritional type supplements or even prescription ones to help combat that imbalance of the candida. Now what can you do on your own? Because I know that in order to neutralize candida with good bacteria, yogurt is something that is, you know, am I correct in saying? Good point. You know, I, I think, yes, yes. But what if you're allergic to cow's milk? Right. There are many, many products that you can take now, acidophilus, and, and to re-inoculate your intestinal flora. And, and that's becoming pretty widely recognized. I've even had doctors that are maybe not as aware of all these things recognizing that when you take an antibiotic, for example, and you kill off 
various flora in your body, you're also killing off good and you're, you're imbalancing it. So by re-inoculating it with supplements, and that's what can be done. But again, due to the complexity of the condition, it's really one that's best guided by doctor and or nutritionist as opposed to trying to self-medicate for a condition like candida. Jeffrey, now in order to neutralize the candida, typically you want to eat good bacteria, which is typically found in yogurts. Well, what if you're allergic to cow's milk? Right, and problem. that's one of the complications that occurs for people that have a candida problem, which is why I am highly recommend you work with either a nutritionist and or a physician who's familiar with this particular condition. That way, when you get into treating it, you're really taking into account the blood print, which are the foods you're sensitive to, the, the things that may be hidden in the supplements that you might be taking. But ultimately, a doctor will guide you on the proper diet that doesn't feed the candida, as well as the proper supplements that will help rebalance your intestinal flora. And so you will end up finding relief. It does take some time to heal that particular condition. Now, Jeffrey, tell me, what are some of the reasons that people end up with a candida problem in the first place? Yeah, good question. And what happens is that sometimes from another uh, health problem they've had that required antibiotics, the antibiotics will be taken and they'll do a great job of killing off whatever it was that was bugging them, so to speak, but it'll also kill off the good bugs that keep the candida in balance. So what happens is people have to learn that once you've had antibiotics, you have to re-inoculate the intestinal floor with friendly bacteria and then that way um, you'll be able to minimize the problem and, and restore your health. Another thing is that the birth control pill is very popular. It's been associated with, again, upsetting the balance, which makes people prone to uh, candida. So there's several different lifestyle factors that are involved in making candida or encouraging candida's growth. Oftentimes, two people that are eating high amounts of sugar and sweet type foods because yeast loves to thrive on uh, sweets. Thank you, Jeffrey. We've got Dr. Mikkel Parsons standing by with some alternative food ideas. Dr. Parsons, any thought for our caller? Jeffrey, you're right. Candida is a huge problem, and I see this literally every day in my practice. Keep in mind, candida is a bug. It is something that we often have already inside us. It's supposed to be there, but at certain levels, when we are feeding it, yes, we actually feed candida, then that's gonna be a cause of a lot of health problems, weight gain, rashes, headaches, fatigue, those are just a few. So if you've been told that you've got a candida infection, first thing you have to do is starve the bug, which means you need to focus on foods that are not going to feed it. So it's really easy. Meat, non-starchy veggies, nuts and seeds, eggs, those are the things that doesn't really like too much. What is it like? All of the yummy things that we love. Anything with sugar, all grains, fruit, starchy, uh, complex carbohydrates, loves white potato, because those things get converted to sugar. And we need to do a two-step approach when we're dealing with this. But step one is you need to not feed the bug. Now this might mean that you are eliminating some foods that you aren't necessarily allergic to, but your bug is going to want to eat. The other thing that I have observed clinically is many people go through huge cravings. And those cravings are mediated because that candida wants to be fed. So if you suddenly start to crave a popsicle and you haven't had one in years, heads up, that could be your bugs talking. So one of the things that you can do is look up an article that I recently wrote talking all about candida, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We talk about diet, we talk about supplementation. Know that this bug is a survivor. It wants to win the battle. There is no gray when it comes to feeding that bug. Don't feed it. You are at war. You are bigger than it, and you're going to win. Fastest way to get rid of it, quit feeding it, take the supplementation that is recommended by your health care provider, and get ready to fight the war. But once you break through those cravings, you are home free, and the weight usually comes off. Thanks, Dr. Mikhail Parsons, and to you, Jeffrey Zavik. We'll continue with Window on Wall Street after the break, but may I encourage those of you watching who may have a family member, friend, or coworker experiencing similar health issues to forward this video to them. And if you haven't had your immunoblood print, please learn more and get yourself tested. 
Remember, there's a hidden link between what you eat and how you feel. I'm Lauren Koenig, and we'll be right back.